Hi there, Dr. Rajiv Iyer here from IMG Secrets. In this video, I'm going to tell you how I crushed my USMLE Step 1 in just three months using five different things. And my hope is that you can do exactly the same. Let's do this together. When I did my Step 1, I was quite busy clinically. I had a long day of work. So what I did was, I used to read when I was eating something. I used to read when I was exercising. I used to read when I was walking. Isn't this too much? No, I actually did it. That's how I could optimize the time I had to maximize my preparation. I started with USMLE word, number one. The second thing was first aid. The third thing was reference textbooks that I use mostly for references. I didn't spend too much time reading them. The fourth thing was my notes. I made a lot of notes for high yield topics that I felt like I'm going to forget. And the fifth thing was my wife. I'm going to tell you how I approached each of them. Even today, when I speak to medical students and residents, they tell me they're using this exact same strategy of reading that I'm going to talk in this video. All right. So I started with the subscription of USMLE Word. I went through the question. I initially started with what was called a tutor mode because I wanted to maximize the learning that they gave with all the explanation. Simultaneously, I jumped onto first aid. What I realized with first aid was first aid is a book that is not for beginners. First aid is a very Americanized concept. When I see children here come back from school, that's exactly how they're reading. So it makes it very hard to grasp all the concepts. Now in the US medical schools, local graduates get a lot of training to prepare for USMLA. But you and me as IMGs do not have this option. So it's important to build a baseline knowledge and then use first aid. So day by day, I'm building my concepts for USMLA step one using USMLA word first aid, making a lot of different notes, especially for high yield topics. On top of that, I'm using reference textbooks to solidify my concept. So take the example of a complex topic like pulmonary function test. Okay, so this is physiology, a favorite subject in USMLE step one. When you look at pulmonary function test, there are four volumes, four capacities. Now, what I thought was if I made a mnemonic, as you see on the screen, this is my mnemonic using T-I-E-R and then come up with the volumes and capacities. So I realized this is a great way of remembering this. Now these days, you can actually use AI to generate mnemonics for you. But I do caution because somebody else is doing the work for you. It's sometimes hard to remember the mnemonic. The last thing you want to do is completely forget the mnemonic. If you want to use AI, that's totally fine. But do put some of your personal flavor into it. Ultimately, you need to remember them during the exam. Making sense? All right, then I used to ask my wife to randomly ask me questions either from first aid or from USMLE word or from my notes and then test my knowledge. So this is how I realized, okay, now I'm getting tested on random topics that I didn't guess I would be tested on, just like a real test. And that actually helped me solidify my concepts even more. Within a few weeks, I knew I could knock off the exam and I did actually do really well on the exam. Well, I'm not bragging, but I did do good on the exam and I passed in the first attempt. And these days with USMLE step one being only a pass or fail, I expect this to be slightly more easier than how it used to be before when people got a score. And here is what I planned my day of the exam. So I knew it's going to be a long day. I knew I have to have attention all through the day. There are three favorite things I personally like to keep myself more active. So coffee, dark chocolate, and chewing gum. So I planned in such a way that I took a break of a few minutes at least after each and every session. So I could sip on my coffee, <laughs> eat some dark chocolates. Of course, the coffee after one or two hours was so cold, but that's fine. At least I'm getting some coffee. <laughs> You cannot have everything. And then that's how I kept myself stimulated. I had an interesting incident with the chewing gum. So I sign out and then I go have my coffee, have my dark chocolate and put a gum. And then while walking with the gum still in my mouth and the person who is supposed to let me in, this was in Toronto, Canada, stopped me. She said, you cannot chew a gum. I'm like, it's just a gum. It's in my mouth. What is wrong with chewing a gum? Well, she said, our policy wouldn't let you chew a gum. I don't know if things have changed now, so you can always put me in the comments below. I had to spit my gum. I wasn't too happy about it. And that person said, if I don't spit my gum, she's not going to let me write my USMLE step exams. I did not want to obviously risk that. Maybe, then I thought about it, maybe they have some detecting softwares that if there is a constant movement of the face, maybe it gets messed up. 
I actually don't know. That could be a reason as well. Anyway, all in all, finished the exam. The timing was fine. It's a long exam for sure. And then once I got the results, I was pretty happy. I hope you can use some of the same strategies in order to help you succeed with your USMLE step one. There are a few disclaimers I want to make here. What all I said is my own story. Now, I took three months because I felt like I had a solid baseline knowledge. Now, this is something you have to analyze for yourself. Now, I did have a solid baseline knowledge because I already had done residency in anesthesiology from India. For that, I had prepared really well. And if you're still a medical student watching this, so this is something you have to keep in mind that you need to build your baseline knowledge. Okay, is that making sense? And the second thing is I like having coffee, dark chocolate, chewing gum, but you might like something else, of course, as long as it's something that makes sense in that context. And just adapt those things to yourself. You know yourself more than anyone else. If you want to talk to me or any of our experts, you can always go to our website www.imgsecrets.com from where you can book an appointment with me or one of our experts. We will sit with you on a one-on-one -on -one video call and then guide you exactly through your career and your next steps. Any questions, do post in the comments below. We try to get back to you as soon as possible. As you can imagine, we got a lot of questions from various different sources. Take care, stay safe, I will talk to you soon.